What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can get a free speed boost on most systems using Automatic 11's Stable Fusion Web UI. The thing that I'll be talking about is SD Web UI Forge. You'll find a link to this in the description down below. Essentially, it's a drop in upgrade for Automatic 11's Stable Diffusion Web UI, and on most systems, especially those with lower VRAM, we'll see huge improvements of 30 to 45%, 60 to 75, and so on. The only place you don't really get anything is if you you're already on a super high system, like a 4090, where you'll only get about 3 to 6% extra speed, though 30 to 45 and 60 to 75 is absolutely massive. It drops the VRAM usage for all models on all systems, etc. It's super powerful. Not to mention, you can even create SDXL images about twice as large a bit faster. It's super powerful and something I definitely recommend you look into if you're trying to generate images on your own system. So, how exactly do we use Stable Diffusion Web UI Forge? Well, first of all, we need to download and install this much like we do normal Automatic 11 distributions. For this, scrolling down, you can either download a one-click installer, which will download a roundabout 1.7 gig zip, for which you can extract this to a folder, such as, let's say this, there we go. And once it's done, you can delete the zip and run update, first of all. Then when this is complete, use run.bat to start it up. The reason I'm not actually running these is that on some systems, you may encounter issues. Usually running update and then run will get you going straight away but if you'd like a more similar install experience to automatic 11 that should be more reliable on more systems we can manually install git python clone it and run it i'll be showing you that now first of all in the description down below you'll find a link to git choose windows then download the 64-bit setup when it's done open it and you'll simply be clicking through all the way until it installs git you can skip practically all the options, just click next a whole bunch, followed by install. Then when it's done, we'll click finish and download Python if you don't already have this. At the very top, we'll choose Windows here. Then on this page, we'll use Control F to search, type in 3.10, and we'll look for the latest release that has a Windows download. 10.13 doesn't include a download, 12, scrolling down, 11, here we go, there's a bunch of downloads below this. We'll simply choose to download the Windows installer, 64-bit here, and we'll run the installer. Simply run it, and make sure that add Python to path is ticked. This is the most important step and you can install it as usual. Now that we've installed Git and Python, the last thing we need to do is copy this path over here, right click, copy, and we'll be cloning this where we can then run it. So I'll make a new folder called Forge Manual, for example, and in here, we'll click at the very top to select all of the text and type in CMD, then hit enter. In this new window, that's already in the correct folder, we can type in git space clone space and paste in the address here, then space and a full stop to copy it into this folder folder and hit enter. Now it'll copy the entire project off of GitHub and closing this window here, you'll see everything that we'll be using. Simply scroll all the way down until you find webuiuser.bat and open it up. Now, unlike normal Automatic 11, we don't actually need to customize any launch arguments. And in fact, a ton of them are already removed. Things like med or low VRAM, etc., should all automatically be run and optimized for your system in particular while it's actually starting up. So there's not really any customization you need to do for a huge speed boost. It's a drop in upgrade. If you find that you get any errors when you're installing this in this screen here, make sure you're running the correct version, such as the error here. And of course, if you see something about Python not recognized and you're on Windows 10 or 11, you may need to install Python from the Microsoft Store first. On top of this, if you already have an existing Stable Diffusion folder with models and things like that, scroll up and you'll find similar folders such as embeddings, extensions, models, and in here, your Stable Diffusion models, Stable Video Diffusion, which is a new thing with this, as well as everything else like ControlNet, etc. For now though, I'll wait for this download to complete and show you what it looks like. Then eventually, the program will just start up and be in your browser. If it doesn't, you'll find a link roughly over here that you can control click or select right click to copy, then paste it into your browser. Now, of course, you'll see it's pretty much exactly the same as Automatic 11, but we have a stable video diffusion tab, Z123 tab, and one other thing that's different is a bunch of extensions are pre-installed, like ControlNet, for example. One of the unique features about this version is the mask that we can use so we can get even more granular control over our control net. However, the one thing it'll be missing is models for our control net. If you haven't already used control net and things like that, then in order to set up your Stable Diffusion web UI, we'll need Stable Diffusion models so we can generate images, 
and control net models if you'd like to use this advanced thing to copy poses, depths, and things like that from one image to another. One of the websites I'd recommend looking on for stable diffusion models is Civit AI, though do note there's a ton of uh, NSFW things here. For downloading control net models, you'll find a link in the description down below for normal stable diffusion 1.5 models, which is one of the types of stable diffusion models you can have, as well as an XL version of these control net models that you can use with SDXL. What you'll do is find something that you want to use, for example, maybe depth or canny, and click the download button here. Then once you've downloaded these, head into your forge folder, followed by models and control net. This is where you'll be dropping those files. When it's done downloading, drop both the model in here and the YAML configuration for it. Then in your web UI, you should be able to, under control net, refresh here to find the new model. You can of course select these manually or choose whatever you're trying to use here, for example, canny, and it'll select both the preprocessor and the model too. So for example, if we load a model here and drag in an image that we can work with, I can select the person sitting over here as such and select the canny model, enable it, give it a prompt as such and generate. You'll see an image comes out of our mask and the rest, obviously it's not the right size. Let's quickly just adjust that, make the width a bit more, probably there somewhere. Generate, that should hopefully be the right size. Nope, a little bit wider. Yeah, there we go. So it's taken our person in space that we've highlighted and used the depth model around just this to create the new person. Obviously it's a bit confused as there's a ton going on in this image, but you get the point. Canny is now configured, so I'll disable that, as well as you now know where to download models, etc. Is this faster? Well, actually, yeah. And it's using a ton less VRAM. If I pull across my task manager, for example, usually I'm capped all the way up at the top when I'm generating images. But here, it's using probably a lot less VRAM and we're generating images that are quite a bit bigger than usual. So maybe 1024 by, I don't know, 720 will generate an image. And with a very minimal spike in VRAM, you should see the image generates very quickly. Usually in Automatic 11, Stable Diffusion Web UI, it would struggle a lot, etc. But here we can generate much bigger images with a much lesser VRAM cost. Let's say a two by one image that's absolutely massive. Obviously an image of this size would be more suited towards Stable Diffusion XL, but in just a few seconds, you should see that our image is generated. Creating an image of this size would be practically off limits for me in normal SDUI, as I just don't have enough VRAM. I've only got 12 gigs of VRAM, whereas something like a 3090, 4090 has 24. So here at least it can be done. It's piecing together the last bits. And there we go, there's our image created, whereas previously this just wouldn't be possible. Obviously, SDXL would have better compatibility over the entire image, but you get the point. Finally, the extensions are pretty much exactly the same as normal stable diffusion. It's just that some of these are more optimized for Forge, being customized, etc. And of course, we can install our own from URLs, or of course, from the usual repository of all of the extensions. So I'd highly recommend you check this out if you haven't already, and upgrade your stable diffusion experience completely for free, possibly even doubling your performance just like that. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.